Alright, in this video I'm going to take a look at some indefinite integrals um, with trig functions, specifically ones dealing with some trig functions, and we will be using a U substitution method on this type of integration here. Alright, so for my first example, I think I'll do about three examples, just kind of keep it short, but to give you a nice little variety of three different things you could do here. So for this first example here, I'm going to integrate 4x to the third sine x to the fourth dx. Okay, um, as we have done earlier in, like, as I have done earlier in videos, we've talked about, you know, this U substitution method being important whenever you have composite functions. comes in really, really handy. So you're going to want to look for where there is a composite function going on. I've got a sine x to the fourth here. All right, well, my inside function would be that x to the fourth. My outside function would be the sine of something. All right, so when I choose my u, I'm going to let it be that inside part. So I am going to let u equal that x to the fourth. All right, so that's how I'm choosing it. All right, at that point, then, you're going to take the derivative of both sides of this. So when I take a derivative of u, I get 1 du, and then when I take the derivative of that x to the fourth, I get a 4x to the third, and then we definitely want to put in that dx. In my classes, I off, um, have the students go one step farther and go and actually solve for that dx, so I would then divide both sides by 4x to the third. So d the du over 4x to the third equals dx. All right, and all that does then is it makes my substitution here and my next step just a little more obvious and I don't miss anything on my substituting. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to this original equation. I'm going to substitute everything that I can from what I have done here so far. So I'm going to be integrating 4x to the third. Can't really do anything with that right there. All right, sine all right, now I had said that u was going to be equal to the x to the fourth, so I can go sine u. And I've got a dx here that I have solved for, so I can substitute in a du over a 4x to the third. Now, at this point, I'm going to cross out everything that I can, simplify it as much, much as I possibly can. If I can get it down to where I am integrating something with only u's in it, then I know I have chosen the correct u substitution over here. All right, so here I have a 4x to the third in the top and a 4x to the third in the bottom, so I can cross those two things out. When I cross those things out, I then am left with the integral of sine u du. All right, so I have successfully been able to cross out all my x's and get rid of everything. So then now I can integrate an equation here in terms of u. Integrating sine u gives me a negative cosine u, and then we can't forget that plus c since this is an indefinite integral. All right, and then um, now what I have to do, my answer here is in terms of u. My original equation here was in terms of x, so I need to substitute this back in so that I have a negative cosine x to the fourth plus c. Okay, because you always want to make sure that your final answer is in, is in the same variable, in the same terms as what you originally started with. All right, so that's my first example. All right, my second example here, let's take a look at the integral of secant 1 minus x tangent 1 minus x dx. Okay, so again, I'm going to um, look to see if I can see some composite functions going on here. I can. All right, I've got a secant of 1 minus x and a tangent of 1 minus x. All right, this part right here luckily matches. All right, my inside part is 1 minus x. My outside part of the functions is the secant x tangent x part. So that means I'm going to let my u equal that 1 minus x. All right, then I'm going to take the derivative of both sides here. So the derivative of u is going to be 1 du. And then the derivative here is going to be a negative 1. And then I'm going to put in that dx. All right, again, I want to solve for that dx. So I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 1 du over negative 1 equals dx. All right, and then that's a little tacky written like that, so then I'm going to go ahead and just make it a negative 1 du, just because the whole entire thing over there is going to be negative, so negative du. All right, so now I've done that. Now I'm going to come back over to my original equation, and I'm going to substitute everything that I can. All right, so I'm going to be integrating. All right, secant. Can't do anything with that, but this I can replace with my u, so secant u, tangent 
U. All right, now when I substitute in here for my DX, I need to substitute in a negative DU or a negative 1 DU. All right, if you want to put multiplication signs between that, you could just so you can see the different things there. All right, now I am in turn, I don't have to cross anything out on this one because I'm already, everything is in terms of U, which is what I want so that I can integrate this. I do have this negative 1 here. I would recommend pulling that out before you do your integration. So negative 1, integrating secant u tangent u du. All right, hopefully this is one that you have memorized when you integrate secant u tangent u. Then you get back a secant u, and then I've got this negative out in front. So then it would be a negative secant u and then plus c. All right, so pretty straightforward integration here as long as you've got your integrals memorized. All right, this is in terms of u. My original equation was in terms of x, so I need to make that substitution back in there. So negative secant 1 minus x and then plus c. All right, so again, that one's a pretty straightforward one um, as long as you have your integrals memorized there. All right, and then we'll do one last example. Here, we'll get away from the products here and we'll do a rational function here. Okay, so I'm going to integrate on this third example here. I'm going to integrate sine x over cosine x cubed. All right, so written as that, like it is this way, you may not recognize that really this bottom is saying cosine of x raised to the third power. All right, so a lot of times I will have my students go ahead and rewrite that equation. All right, so let's do a little rewrite just so they can see that. Okay, so if I do a little rewrite here, I could rewrite this as the integral of sine x over cosine x raised to the third power and then dx. All right, if you do that rewrite there, then hopefully you can see here's your composite function. Your inside is your cosine x. The outside function would be something being raised to the third power. All right, so that just may be able to help you find your u a little bit better there or a little bit easier. So I'm going to let u equal the inside part here, which would be a cosine x. All right, now I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. Derivative of that u would be 1 du. And then cosine x, when I take the derivative there, I'm going to have a negative sine x dx. All right, and then going all the way down, solving for that dx, I'm going to have a du over a negative sine x equals dx. All right, so now I can come over here now, take a looking at this, trying to do some substituting and see what I can get rid of here. So the sine x on top is going to have to stay. Okay, so sine x. All right, on the bottom though, that cosine x I can replace with a u, so I can go u cubed. And the dx I can replace with a du over a negative sine x. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to look and see what I can cross out. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to cross out all of my x's. All right, I've got a sine x here and a sine x here. So top and bottom, those two cross out. I do have a negative 1 still sitting here in the bottom. So I would recommend pulling that outside the integral before I start working here. So I'm going to pull the negative outside my integral. All right, I would be left with a 1 over u to the third du. I have been able to successfully get it down to just all u's, so that's good. So that meant my u substitution over here is correct because everything crossed out. Now to integrate this, I'm going to move the u to the third up and make it a negative 3. So I'm going to have a negative, the integral of u to the negative 3 du. Okay, now I'm actually ready to integrate. So I'm going to add 1 to that numerator right there. It's going to give me a, or numerator. I'm going to add 1 right there to that exponent, which is going to give me a u to the negative 2. I'm going to then multiply by that reciprocal, so it's going to give me the negative 1 half there in front. All right, this negative right here, you can't forget, is still out there in front. Okay, and then I'll have the plus c on there. Okay, so a negative times a negative is going to make it a positive. All right, and I think before I put the u back in, I'm going to go ahead and write this um, in the denominator just kind of maybe to clean it up a little bit here. So I'm going to have a positive 
and then the 2 will be in the bottom. This U, I'm going to go U squared down there plus C. I'm just kind of cleaning that up before I plug my X back in there. Alright, so negative times negative makes this whole thing positive. The 2 stays in the bottom, and this is going to go back down there at the bottom and make it positive. So then now I can replace my U with what it equals. Let's make sure we can see this. So 1 over 2 cosine X squared plus C. Okay, so there now I have an answer in terms of X. Alright, there would be um, no real reason you could write it like that. If you wanted to, let's go back up here, see if I can pull this down a little bit. Um, if you wanted to write it back in the same notation with the two on the inside there, you could. Alright, let's do that as an alternate answer over here. 1 over 2 cosine squared x and then plus c. Okay, so if you wanted it in that same format that they had in the original problem, you could do that. Either one of those answers would be equivalent. So um, definitely thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully this helped you out with your use substitution and some trig functions. Um, and obviously, if you are enjoying the videos, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.